Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at a topic that comes up all the time in the ICU, and that's GI prophylaxis. I'm going to be using the most up-to-date guidelines regarding GI prophylaxis as of January 2019. Now, I'm going to talk about first why we don't just put everybody on GI prophylaxis. We're going to talk about the drugs that we use and their mechanisms of action. And we're going to explain the indications, both hard and soft, and why they are, in fact, indications for GI prophylaxis. So, like I mentioned, the first thing I want to talk about is why not give it to everybody? So, what we need to think about here and what we need to understand is that Everything comes at a price, meaning that everything we do to the body, even though it may improve one thing, it may detract from something else. So our normal stomach acid pH is about 1.5 to 3.5. And this is for a number of reasons, be it to break down certain foods, uh, break down proteins, uh, but also to keep certain bacteria, bugs, and invasive particulate matter uh, from really taking over and or ruining our GI system and our microflora. So this stomach acid and this pH is very important. And what our drugs are going to do for the most part, they're going to result in an increase in our pH or a decrease in the acidity of this stomach acid through a couple of mechanisms. And this can have a number of effects, the two most important being an increased risk of Clostridium difficile colitis, or C. diff for short, which can be extremely detrimental, if not lethal, in especially elderly or very sick, otherwise ICU patients. And this is because, like we mentioned, there's a change in our pH of our GI tract and our stomach, and this allows certain bacteria to otherwise, in theory, outcompete normal GI flora. Now, the other risk is that it increases our risk of VAP, or ventilator-associated pneumonia. Now, our patients that have endotracheal tubes especially, no matter what, even though the airway may be secured, there's always risks of microaspirations. Now, if, like I mentioned, we change the GI flora here in the stomach, it means that you're going to have lots of little bugs that maybe aren't supposed to be here, all kind of swimming around. And if you were to have micro vomitus or anything, any type of regurgitation, it's going to go ahead and it's going to go up and you could end up aspirating it. And so we see patients who are on GI prophylaxis actually have an increased risk of ventilator associated pneumonia. Now, this is also extremely important because the mortality secondary to ventilator associated pneumonia is much greater than a GI bleed. So we must weigh the benefits and risks and weigh the lesser of two evils in many cases. So two, let's take a look at the drugs. And there's a lot of them, but we're just gonna talk about, you know, the two main classes and the, uh, you know, one or two drugs from each of them. The first one being our histamine blockers or our H2 blockers. And these come in the flavors mostly of anything, um, ending in tidine. So these are things like cimetidine, famotidine, uh, etc. And then we have our PPIs or our proton pump inhibitors. inhibitors. And you're going to hear this called like protonics. This would be uh, our azole or our pantoprazoles. So we have cimetidine, and pantoprazole. Now, what each of these are going to do, like we mentioned, is that they're going to go ahead and increase our pH of the stomach acid, each by its own mechanism, one by blocking the actual proton pumps and the other one by blocking our histamine uh, receptors on our ECL cells within the stomach that prevent down the line cascades uh, to increase stomach acidity. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep here into each of their mechanisms of actions, as this is only a 10-minute video meant to discuss the clinical implications. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is understanding that both of these drugs are going to go ahead and reduce our stomach pH. I'm sorry, increase our pH, reduce our acidity. Next, the two most important risk factors requiring... 
GI prophylaxis. And this is where a lot of the debate comes in. This is what a lot of different people kind of argue about. And you may see one attending to one thing, another attending to another thing. But as per up to date, the two main risk factors, and this seems to be consistent across all recommendations, are mechanical ventilation greater than 48 hours and a coagulopathy. Now, I'm not going to write it down here uh, in the interest of time, but a coagulopathy in this case specifically, platelets less than 50,000, an elevated INR greater than 1.5, or a PTT or partial thromboplastin time greater than two times your normal control value. Now, these are the really the two main reasons for GI prophylaxis. The other major indicators that, again, we see a lot of the kind of dispute over, so we'll put these as kind of like in the middle here in, in blue, are going to be uh, things like burns greater than 35% of the body, as these can result in curling ulcers, and head trauma, which can in turn result in Cushing's ulcers as a result of our parasympathetic discharge. Parasympathetic being rest and digest, you increase the amount of acid you produce as a result, and that can lead to ulcers. Now, there are a plethora of other risk factors, including but not limited to things like shock, sepsis, hepatic failure, renal failure, and others. Uh, and they all kind of count more or less as minor indications for GI prophylaxis. And so uh, what I've seen, heard, what I read in uh, Marino's, for example, says that if you have one major being the ones here in purple, or two minor, then it would be indication to put a patient on GI prophylaxis. But again, we have to remember it's important to weigh the risks and benefits as the associated morbidity and mortality with, say, an increased risk of C. diff in certain patients, increased risk of ventilator-associated pneumonia, actually is much higher than a GI bleed where we can, say, transfuse somebody that isn't massively hemorrhaging. Now, I do want to make a note here, and I'm going to do it over in brown. Uh, our standard dosing for GI prophylaxis is going to be 40 milligrams of pantoprazole daily, or in the case of our um, histamine blockers, it's going to go ahead and be 20 milligrams Q12 hours, or twice a day. So that's all for our introduction to GI prophylaxis in the ICU. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out. If you're interested in getting involved, let us know. Click the like button below, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and as always, stay tuned for the next video.